Hello, I'm EJ, the Managing Director of The Supper Club. Welcome to the second episode of our AXA Growth Leaders podcast. This week, we've spoken to entrepreneurs to get their practical tips for improving health and wellness in your workplace. We caught up with Liz Earl, MBE, uh, founder of Liz Earl Wellbeing, Dan Kirby, founder of Tech Department and Get Ahead, Praveen Vij, co-founder of Eat Natural, and Harry Hugo, co-founder of GOAT. So I'm going to start things off by asking, why is well-being so important in the workplace? I'm going to hand over to Liz. Well-being is so important in the workplace because it is a fundamental. Our workplaces are built on people and people are built on well-being. So it is the fundamental pillar that just holds everything of your business together. So many business founders are the linchpin and the key asset of any business. So if you don't look after your own well-being, then that's a real business risk. So you do need to prioritise it. It's an absolutely essential business priority. If you are a fundamental business asset, then you need to look after that asset and protect it as much as you can and do whatever it takes to ensure that your well-being is always safeguarded. Now we know a lot of our members are rapidly scaling their businesses. So the key question we wanted to ask all our panel was how do you actually look after the well-being of yourself and your team during that rapid scale? I think managing fast-growing businesses and managing scale is a real challenge and that certainly I saw uh, firsthand at my time at the beauty company when we grew from a team of two to a team of, oh gosh, nearly 2,000. And any fast-growing business is automatically going to go through a period of change. I think one of the things to do is obviously keep lines of communication open always and hire people who are enthusiastic about your passion and your purpose, who really share that vision, who know where you're going, what the objective is. It's not just about the bottom line always, it's about how we can make the best that we can be. How can we create happier customers through what we're doing? You know, we would always chase happy customers. That's my goal. It's not profit driven, it's profit aware, but it's driven by the need to create more happy customers who then go out and spread the word and tell others and that's how you build strong, successful brands. So I think creating that ethic within your team is really important because they join with you then on the journey and they become enthusiastic about it too. Now let's get practical. I asked Dan Kirby, how do we create a strategy around well-being at work? Let's hear what he had to say. When people talk about well-being at work, what often happens is it descends into a conversation about yoga, right, or meditation, or fruit bowls. And, and that's all, you know, fruit is good, as is meditation and yoga. I like all of those three things. But actually, well-being at work starts with um, getting the fundamentals of your business right, so that when the people walk in the door, they're clear on what they're doing and who they report to and in service of what aim. Um, because if they don't have that basic structure, then they're going to be stressed. So if you put a bunch of stressed people into a, a weekly yoga class, you don't fix your well-being at work problem. Okay, so the thing I've learned actually just through managing my own chimp mind is that uncertainty and lack of clarity is the biggest source of stress. And that's true in life, right? It's also true in the workplace. So as a leader, my responsibility is to create a, a, a purpose for the business which is true and is meaningful and, and people want to sort of get behind but also to have a, a structure in terms of what we do and for whom we do it and the people's roles within the organisation. So an org chart is a good starting point to reduce stress, as are job descriptions and job roles, which perhaps um, the, the, the staff member can feed back into. So they have some level of autonomy and, and control within their environment and that, that evolves over time. So my, my lesson really from is, is to sort of go back to basics with your business and say, okay, let's get these things right first. Then you have a great environment into which a culture cr is created uh, where people can be the best versions of themselves. And then over and above that, if you stick some yoga on or some meditation or encourage people to drink, eat more fruit, that's fantastic. And, 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 you know, and, and that's, you know, I'm not going to disrespect that, but often I think the conversation becomes relatively superficial uh, to leaders of businesses. And, and we talk about the things you can buy and plug in rather than the kind of basic structure of the company. 
Praveen and Harry are themselves rapidly scaling their businesses, so I asked them to share their experiences about their wellbeing strategy. So there isn't any one specific thing that we do, no one fad that we that we partake in uh, every week, but it's much more about every day being a, a wonderful place to, to the, the office being a wonderful place to, to be. We seem to cook together an awful lot. I mean, every lunchtime, everyone's fighting over the stoves or we're all cooking something communally and there's always something to have together. And that allows you to have a communal table experience where people are cooking, talking, eating and enjoying um, a, a lunch break which is away from your computer. So that gives you time to, to decompress a little bit. Think about the well-being of the wider team, the 120 people that work at Go. It's I think it's a 50-50 thing. Um, I think there's a huge amount of importance and a huge amount of focus needs to go on them themselves and they need to work out what's important for them and they also need to be uh, in a position where they're not mothered into knowing exactly what those things are and working out on the journey of understanding your personal wellness and your happiness is as important as getting there um, because you learn so much along the way and I think you know if I look back at my experiences at Sport Lobster and when I was stressed and I was I was burning out I, I, I look back on it now and I can see I was so exhausted I was waking up and throwing up every morning because it was just I was so tired because I was doing 20 21 hour days every day seven days a week and um, that has allowed me to learn what I need to do now now if I hadn't have had that I'd never have known so I think what we can do is support along the journey but I want people to go through that journey now, that's not saying I want people to have the problems but I want people to learn from mistakes and that goes for everything from well-being to actual business learning from mistakes and that sounds really cliche but it is what happens and it might not even be mistakes it might just be experiences and wellness and happiness comes from a central place and it's so different in everybody and that is something that people need to channel themselves to round up, we asked each of our interviewees what tips they would give founders that they can do today to improve their health and well-being. I think starting today, advice for all business founders to benefit them and their team is to prioritise sleep. That has to be a number one, because without sleep, business decisions don't happen necessarily in the right way. So you need to really get that right, ring fence it. The optimum time is seven and a half hours, so make sure that goes into your diaries. One of the great business assets that I've learned is to have better gut health. It may sound extraneous to work, but it's fundamental because it affects mental health, it affects overall well-being, immunity, energy levels, and more importantly than that, it actually is part of our gut instinct. I've learned to rely on gut instinct as a business asset so many times. That instinctive feeling that you get in your tummy when it tells you that something is either right or wrong before your brain has time to rationalise it. I'll often go with my gut instinct first and then process it through the brain later. I think there's three very simple things that you must do if you want to look after your own health and well-being. For me, it's about taking a break from your screen every, at least every lunchtime go away, stop looking at it give, it, give it a break for an hour, drink more water, definitely, that's very important. I think it's very easy to become dehydrated in the office. And number three, go and do some more exercise, moderate every day, a little bit of exercise, just a walk or something which allows you to again have time away from your desk. Go and meet more people like you. Go and talk to them about the problems. Don't try and sell them. I think the big problem that agency founders and people running businesses have is they're trying to sell all the time and actually being honest being human with people is the best form of therapy and talking about your problems and there's a lot of the reason that I first started coming to the supper club um, but at the same time the reason that I spend a lot of time with other people in a similar position to me uh, that I either see as mentors or as friends in the in industry and just talk about issues don't try and tell them how great we are because there's no value in, in that for me. The value is them going, oh, you should think about that or that. Firstly, start a journal. All right? um, it's a magic trick that you can uh, perform every morning, um, which is like free counselling, but with yourself. So all you do is you get a book, and I have a, a, a very nice linen-covered uh, art book actually, it's A4 and it's very heavy but I carry it with me every day and every morning because it's nice quality I feel kind of good about it. I write down what's in my head 
and that's it. And some days there's not very much, and some days you can't believe what pours out of you just by having a blank page and a pen in front of you. Um, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's completely amazing. And once it's on the page, it's not in your head. It's down. So you, you can't, don't have to think about it anymore. And oftentimes all this noise that you get on paper goes away. So instantly you've got a clear mind and you can hit your day without all the background noise that's, that's bugging you that you can't quite articulate, but it's there. So that's the first tip um, I would recommend. Uh, the second tip is that I would finish the day with uh, an exercise that we call positive focus. And it's very, very easy. And all you do is in an, uh, an app on your phone or, or in a, a notepad on your desk uh, or on a piece of paper next to your bed, write down all the things that have happened that day or the top three things that have been positive. Okay? Because even if you had the world's worst day and it's legitimately 99% awful, there is probably 1% which has been pretty good. All right? And so they say it's been sunny <laughs> or you discovered a new record you really like or something. Okay? And the point is, is, at the end of the day, even if you've had a crappy day and if you're really negative and really down and you're tired and a bit depressed, if you write down the things that are positive, it frames the end of the day in a positive way. So you go to sleep thinking, yeah, it wasn't all bad, right? It still might have been really bad, and that's, I'm not talking about being delusional. I'm just talking about focusing on the positive and then nurturing that in your mindset every day. So you don't fall down a wormhole of negativity and, and convincing yourself it's gonna end terribly. So a big thanks to Liz, Dan, Praveen, and Harry for sharing your experiences. For more information on health and well-being in the workplace, head to thesupperclub.com and check out our insights page or head to the AXA Growth Leaders Hub. If you're interested in finding out more about the AXA Growth Leaders series and attending our next live event on the 10th of July discussing leading the future workforce, you can get your free tickets on our website and I'll put links to these in the episode notes. So until next time, ta-da for now.